Well, I bet you thought you'd seen the last of Avely, hadn't you? Fortunately, I've developed a bit of a love for this football club. So every Sunday from this Sunday, from now at 2pm, I'm going to be bringing you a season review as I play Avely offline and letting you know how the save is going, how we're getting on. Because I'm sure there's one or two of you out there that might just be a little bit curious. So let's get into the video and let's see how we've got on since the last time you saw me at Avely Football Club. Okay, so since the last time you was with me, it was part of the 2026-27 season. And we were in and around the playoff places from what I can remember with about six, seven games to go. So according to the schedule, it would have been around the South Shields, Harrogate type of area that we were at. And we've developed a bit of a a bit of an enemy in this save in Aldershot manager Joey Barton. Now, if we have a look at their managers, I'm sure Joey Barton was at this football club. Oh, there he is. Oh, good. He's been sacked. I'm pleased about that. He was a pain in our backside. He really was. He was a very horrible person to deal with in media conferences and all that sort of stuff. And we didn't have the best of records head to head against Aldershot. And he just kept rubbing it in all the time. And I do like it when a football manager gets, gets it right in game. And they've certainly got him right in game. But I am pleased to see that he has since been sacked. After two years and 260 days, he's out of a job. They've now brought in a new manager, Lewis Young. I, I, I wish him all the best. And hopefully Joey, who, good, he's unemployed as well. He hasn't been anywhere since he got sacked by all the shot. So I'm, I'm quite pleased about that, I have to say. But yeah, we, we played him and his team in the playoff semi-final and no sorry in the playoff final so in the playoff semi-final we played Dagenham and Redbridge and won 2-0 then we had Aldershot in the playoff final and thanks to Timmy Abraham we won that 1-0 and we got promoted to Skybet League 2 and we've had I'm going to say we've had a great season because we have it's been a very special season in League 2 and but it's not been it's been weird. Let's have a look at it. So, this is these were the pre-season friendlies. But from the start of the season, against Wickham, we won 3-0. Great start. Got off to a flyer. But then we just went on this run of form here, where the only win we had was in the Bristol Street Motors trophy thing. But in the league, we were just drawing and losing. and You know, we, we rapidly have become the draw specialist in this league, as you'll see when I show you the table. After the Wickham game on the 31st of July, we then had to wait until the 2nd of October until we picked up our next league win. And that was in a 4-1 win against Tranmere with Josh Woods getting a hat-trick, Abdul Abdul Malik getting a goal. We're getting to the players that we've brought in on transfers and all this sort of stuff because I understand Josh Woods will be a new name for you. After that, we then lost in the Bristol Street Motors Trophy, which I'm not worried about. We then had a couple of wins but then we had a couple of draws. Then we had a win and we we had a win in the FA Cup first round as well against Tranmere 2-0. But then we've had a draw. Then we've had a win. We'll ignore that one because it's a Bristol Street trophy thing. Then we had a draw. Then we had a couple of wins and then we got a really good second round win against Barrow 3-2 in the FA Cup. Put us through to the third round of the FA Cup and I enjoyed the fixture that we got here. Um, not necessarily because of the result, but we'll get into that in a second. But then in December in the league, we've drawn two, lost one, won two, drawn one. Now, at this point, you're probably thinking, well, you're not having a very spectacular season, Damo. And that's pretty much the trend throughout the rest of the season. There was nothing spectacular about it. The one thing that is quite evident is that all the other teams in the National League are, or not in, not in the National League, in League Two, sorry, are very inconsistent. So after that, we then get into January and February. And look at this. 5-0 defeat against Everton at their stadium. So they've now moved into that Bramley Dock 
Stadium, 50,000 people in attendance. That made us, in gate receipts alone, I think it was just under 700,000, like 680 or 1,000 pounds. That is huge. For a club like us, that is massive. We have really come into the money. After that, we then won a game. We lost a game. We won a game. We lost a game. We drew a game. Into February, we won a couple. We drew a couple. We won a couple. No consistency at all in this. And then we get into the final two months of the season with a draw, a loss. Uh, sorry, a draw, a win. Three losses in a row against Crew, Colchester and Exeter. And then a couple of wins and a draw to end the season. We finished in the playoffs. And in the first playoff, we played Carlisle. We won 2-1 in the home leg. We drew 1-0 in the away leg. And then our nemesis, Exeter, beat us 3-2 in the final. And let's just talk about that playoff final for a second. Because, yes, we went 2-0 down. And at that point, I thought, OK, fine. We're not through. Exeter have had the better of us this season anyway. We've lost to them fairly recently. We drew to them uh, in the home game. In this instance, at least, we, you know, we're, we're in the game, but we weren't. And then Josh Woods pops up with two goals in two minutes to make it 2-2. Takes it to extra time. When it got to the 114th minute, I'm sitting here thinking we're going to take our chances on penalties. You know, we're a penalty shootout away from a place in League One and getting back-to-back promotions. This is going to be awesome. And then we gave away a penalty. Pierce Sweeney on 115 minutes. When that goal went in, my heart literally sank. It, it devastated me. I was just like... We've come this close to getting promoted and it's been ripped away from us in the 115th minute of a football match. Now, on the plus side of that, there was 51,000 people, nearly 52,000 people, in attendance at Wembley Stadium. Now, what I do have a bit of an issue with is it says here there's 40,554 Exeter fans there, which means there's only like 11,000 Avery fans, don't get me wrong, 11,000 of our fans is awesome because we never get anywhere near that in a league game, as you can see from this, you know, 1,900, 1,900, 1,900, 1,800, 2,000, 1,800. You know, we, we don't get bigger tenants. We do against Leighton Orient for some reason, probably because they're local. But yeah, that was just absolutely devastating to get that close to reaching League One. However... We did receive about £450,000 in gate receipts, you know, it won't be prize money because we didn't go through, but in gate receipts from that. So between the playoff final and the Everton game, we got around £1.2 million from them games, which when you then come and have a look at our finances, we've got £1.3 million in the bank. So them two games have absolutely made it for us this season. As a result, we've got £260,000 in the transfer budget, which I'm giddy. I, I don't know what it's like to have £260,000 in the transfer budget. That, that is in, insane. We've also got 22000 in the wage budget, which is almost double what we had last season. You know, last season we had 13000 I will be putting that into this, which will take us up to around £27,000 in the wage budget, which means we have more than double the wage budget from next season. If we look at the transfers we made this season, it was it was an interesting one, put it that way. So we, Charlie Hughes did go to Kettering on a free transfer. Tom Bilson left. He was our reserve goalkeeper that we brought in. I think we brought him in on a free transfer. If we look over here, he was somewhere around. I don't know if he, we might have brought him in the season before, but he was basically a free transfer goalkeeper. In terms of free transfers we brought in, we've done some really good business on that as well. So we've got Harry Green here, who can play anywhere across here. We are playing the 4-2-3-1 formation, which would also be new to a lot of you. He predominantly played on the right-hand side for us. He's had a 
pretty good season for us. 6.82 rating, three goals, seven assists. He's been pretty pretty handy to have. And, you know, he, he's got four-star ability, three-and-a-half-star current ability. Very happy with this guy here. He's had to move from up north. He's been in Whitby and Scarborough for quite a while, since 2021. So it's been quite a change of scenery for the guy. Probably likes the warmer weather that you get down south, you know. I could say that as someone that lives up north anyway. Then we got Claudio Osario. He has been really good. I've really enjoyed having him. He's been our central attacking midfielder. We don't play him in an enganch position. He's made 38 appearances, seven goals, nine assists. Three player of the match awards for 6.93. He was a standout player in the FA Cup as well. And yeah, he's he's had a really good season. It's In terms of average rate, it's the best season he's ever had. And I've been delighted. He's also come from Scarborough Athletic. Then we have Josh Woods, who is our, has been our striker this season. And look at his league rating. 18 goals in 40 appearances, 6.93. He's been very good. I'm not sure he's what I want going forward. I could probably have him as a backup, as support, but I don't really think he's the type of player that I, I want more from my striker. So he has, as you can see, he says here 21 goals in 43 appearances. That probably includes the playoffs. I don't know. Then after, uh, I mean, when you look at his. Attributes as well. He's not great on attributes. He's going down on this. He's three stars at the moment. Probably going to look at keeping him around. But if someone wants to come in with an £80,000 bid for him, I'm probably not going to say no. Freddie Cook, what a defender this guy's been. As you can see from his average rating, 7.01. Seven goals as well. This guy, six foot three, 14 jumping reach, 13 heading. He has been banging them in from the corners for us. Seven goals, one assist, three player match awards from 38 appearances from a 7.04 rating there. He he has been immense. He, he's formed a really good partnership in our central defence and he's definitely a player that at the age of 23, we want to keep him around for longer. He's contracted till 2030, so we've got him for another couple of years. We might get an offer for him. He does have a minimum fee release clause of £160,000. So there is a possibility someone might come in and take him away from us. If I was a team around this league, I would certainly be looking at Freddie Cook. Josh McNamara as a goalkeeper, someone we've recently bought him because we had a bit of an injury crisis in goal. We got both Tom Bilson and Iscuerdo both got injured. And I bought this guy in before we then played an NX match. And he's been an immediate upgrade. He's, he went straight in a goal. Iscardo hasn't seen the goal since. 17 appearances, 16 goals conceded. And when you see down here, six clean sheets, an average rating of seven. I've been really happy with him. He's previously been at Southampton in the Championship, didn't play for them. He's been around Vanarama National League level, but he's made the step up to League Two and done really, really well. Absolutely delighted with the guy. If we then look at the rest of the transfers, so Robert Henry we got in on loan. We never really played him, but he made one substitute appearances. He was a central defender, only six foot. We got him in as backup. He ended up getting recalled um, quite early on into his loan spell. It is what it is. Eric Burns is the other guy in a central defence that has built up this relationship with Freddie Cook, and he's been fantastic as well. He's only been in on loan. Three-star current ability, four to five-star potential ability. When you look at his contract, he does still have another year with Swindon with an optional contract extension. I'm hopeful we might be able to get Eric Burns back in on loan again for next season. Have him here for a second season. We, you know, He's played in pretty much every game. He's only got two goals this season, but his defensive work has been phenomenal. And as you can see by the amount of games he's played, he has been ever-present for us. We then look at George Sanchez, who's a guy we got in in August. Didn't really play him to begin with, but then he did slowly come in for Luciano in the right-back role, and he can also cover his left-back as well. 31 appearances, 2 assists, 6.69. Doesn't shout great, and he probably wasn't great, if we're being completely honest, but he's only in on loan. He goes back to Bolton now. Thank you very much for your services. Really appreciate it. Mehmet Kalishkan. Now, I'm a bit bothered 
by this one because he's played 45 appearances, 10 as a substitute in the league. 6.87, five goals, five assists. He's looked really good since he's coming. He's coming for Cameron McGeehan and he has looked so good. And as you see there, 42 appearances, five goals, four assists, three player match awards. Bolton are not happy with us because we've been playing him outside of the agreed position. So we're not going to get him back in on loan. His value is in the millions, so we're not going to be able to buy him. If we look at his contract details, he's contracted to them for another two years. They do also have an optional contract extension for another one year. It's such a shame we're not going to see him again next season because I've absolutely loved having this guy at the club. If we have a look at the tactic, 4 2 3 1, we've been playing. This hasn't necessarily been our first choice team. If I make the changes as to what our first choice team would look like. Obviously, Edwino Vaz comes in there. The legend of the save at this point, Edwino Vaz. Get a like in the comments for the fact that Edwino Vaz is still here five years into the Avery save. That's pretty much where we have been going. We've also had... Where's Abdul Malik gone? Oh, he's in here. So what we have had is Abdul Malik there and Claudio Rosario, who's injured, has been there. However, it has to be a bit of a shout out for David Cower because he's on a 7.13, 40 appearances, 13 of those from the bench, seven goals and 14 assists this guy has made. He's been, Claudio Rosario being out injured has made me play this guy and he's been sensational. He really has been better than last season. His contract expires in the summer. So here we go, folks. Let's try and see if we can enter into contract negotiations with him. Live on the video, you're not going to see many things like this. He wants 575. It's going to be 675 from there. I will say, if you can make 20 assists, then we'll give you your money. We've changed that to 20%. That's what I've been doing for most players. I'm going to take out unused sub. We'll keep the assist bonus in there. We'll keep the loyalty bonus because we've got a bit of money these days. And let's see if we can knock that down to 500. So let's knock that down to 600 in total. Let's see what he comes back with. So he's not kicked off about those. Let's see if we can negotiate the wage. I mean, he seems very agreeable. Well done. So I am happy to be keeping David Cower at this club next season. When we look... At, so yeah, basically that has been our first team. When we look at it, we really do need to improve on Edwino Vaz. You know, Bailey Berry, if you put him in there, no, doesn't do the job. Darren McCordy is a young, young talent, of course. And I have been playing him a little bit more. 17 starts, 14 substitute appearances, no goals, two assists. He's, he's okay. I just, I just prefer my, my Edwino Vaz. And I mean, I'll be honest, for those of you that have been watching the Colchester series or the, bottoms, the rest of the Bottoms Up series, which hopefully you have done. I mean, hopefully me leaving Avery hasn't put people off watching the rest of the series. Hopefully it opens it up to even more people coming in. But I have looked at purchasing Edwino Vaz, but even at a League Two club, I can't afford it. But, and also, I, I, I don't know. I, I'm trying to talk myself out of it because I'm very much talking myself into it at the moment. But yeah, he's still there. So we very much need to improve here. We need to improve in the attacking positions as well. We will need someone to back up him because if we have him out of the team, we then come in with Luciano. If we take Eric Burns out, it'd be Aidan Francis Clark, who technically is not much different. And then we've got Mehmet coming out. Which, sorry, it's not McGeehan that I said last time. It's Cortez is the guy he's replaced. And what I'd probably do is turn them over so that Cortez actually in his preferred position. So the central midfield, I'm happy with that. But I want to bring in better backup. I think Sam Collins is a backup for Asario. No doubt about that. McCauley is backup. Cower is backup. Although there could be an argument to bring him in there because he's actually better than Abdul Malik. And Abdul Malik, we did originally bring him in to be a striker. I actually think his time could be up. I mean, is he he's out of contract at the end of this season. So I do I I have a lot of decisions to make regarding a lot of players. 
if we look at the squad, filter in terms of who's in the team, looking down here, we've got Francis Clark, Edwino Vaz, Shamar Lawson, David Cower. I mean, David Cower signed a new contract. So yeah, we've got one, two, we've got three players in their first choice 11 that are running out of contract. So we need to decide whether we're going to be keeping these two and who's the other guy, Shamar Lawson. I mean, Shamar Lawson, for me, seems a no-brainer. I don't know if he's going to want to stay, that is. But no, he doesn't. Oh, no. He's wanted by Leighton Orient. Why can we not... Okay, I'm confused. Why can we not offer him a contract? Dynamics. He's not in there. Why is Shema Let's have a look at happiness. I mean, he holds me in the highest regard. Wants to commit his future to the club. Well, commit it then. There's nothing to withdraw. So it's not like we've offered him a contract. Why are we not? Filter club's league position has a lot to do with my influence. Please so have... Pass the late fit, please. Exit support from manager dressing is about justified content with training. Feels he has a strong partnership. I mean, his favourite personnel is very happy with the amount of playing time he's getting. I have no idea why he won't sign a new contract with us. Let me know in the comments, folks, if you know what that reason may be. But I'm very confused because. Contract details, it's running out. Oh, hang on. Provisionally agreed to sign a new... Oh, okay. So he's signed... Oh, phew. So he's signed a new contract with us. Which So he's one of the players we've got signed previously that it comes into effect at the start of the season. Okay. Now I need to work out how many more of them are like that. So Aidan Francis Clark. He's not one of them. Edwino Vaz. He's not one of them either. So we definitely need to make a decision on him. If we look at the rest of them. So Timmy Abraham, who I'm undecided about him because he's probably not good enough. Well, he's not good enough as a striker, but he can play right and left attacking midfield. So he is very useful, very versatile. Abdul Malik. We haven't done anything with him. Sam Collins. We've not done anything with him. We know we didn't with Aidan Francis Clark. David Cow, we've offered a contract. Jackson Ischiedo. Nope, nothing with him. And I don't know with Jackson if we do keep him because he wants to be first choice. He's going to get unhappy. So we might just well end up letting him go. Harrison Thompson, we're probably going to let go anyway. He's, I mean, his playing time surplus to requirements. He's not been, let's just make sure we haven't already offered him a contract before I commit to letting him go yet. Darren McCauley, now, he's not, now we're into the 2029. 20, okay, so, out of all of these, the first choice 11 are committed to being here. I'm really kind of thinking the rest of them that are not first choice 11s, we're letting them go. So we're going to be letting go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine players. Like I say, McCauley does have some potential. So I am tempted to try and keep him around. And Timmy Abraham is useful as backing up right, left and up front. But we'll see. We're, we're, we're not going to drag the whole video onto that. But that's basically what we're looking at starting the next season with this being our first choice 11. So players that I bring in on loan or as free transfers, whatever, in the summer, I'm looking at them being replacements for here. So... There's not many people that are safe. I mean, Freddie Cook is probably safe. Cortez and Lawson are probably safe. And Harry Green is safe. McNamara is safe. But wing back, another one or two central defenders. Left back, sorry, right back, left back. A couple of central defenders. 
attacking midfielders, left-sided, striker. We could be doing a lot of business. And the fact that we've got, once we move, let's move this money now. Why don't it let me move it? Okay, I'll see if I can move that later on. But that will take that up to £27,000. So we're going to have £16,000 to spend on around 10 players. So we can do some really good business. I won't. I, I might not even move that to begin with. I might just see how we get on with going up to 22000 So, yeah, it has turned out to be a really good season. If we look at the actual table itself... Skybet League 2 table. We finished seventh. No, we didn't. We finished sixth. 18 draws in that in that league. I do look at that and I think, you know, bear in mind, we're only seven points off getting an automatic promotion. And for a little while, we were up in third. We, we, I'll show you on the graph in a moment. We were up in third place. And I do look at it and I think only seven points. Three of the, you know, four. Yeah, four of these draws turned into wins and we could have actually been up in in here we've lost less league games than any other team in the league i mean it's it's just it's been a really weird season because like i said we've just been so inconsistent but even Leighton orient who won it they've not been greatly consistent they really haven't and you know they they were only 12 points ahead of it no sorry 11 points ahead of us you know in terms of defensive records we had the second best defensive record in the league. In terms of goals scored, we were quite down on goals scored, which does kind of back up my thing that if we can keep the defence solid and improve on our attack, then we really can put in a push to get promoted. Now, in terms of the season review, I think that's pretty much all we need to do. But what I am going to say is, We've got quite a few staff that are going to be running out of contract. For example, our assistant manager, Stefan Galinsky, he runs out of contract in, what, a month and a half's time. I undecided whether to keep him with me. Part of me wants to keep him with me because he was with us in the National League. He's with us in League Two so far. You know, maybe we should send him on a coaching course to improve him. In actual fact, let's let's see if the board will do the coaching course and you know get him at least onto a continental or national b license would be his next one let's get him moving in the right direction or do i just let him go and get rid of him because he's only one and a half star reputation he's rubbish quite honestly but uh yeah undecided on that so what we'll do is we'll come back in the next part of the video We'll do the actual end of season review that you get on screen. And then I think we'll have a little bit of a look around at how the rest of football looks in 2028. Okay, here we are then for this end of season review official. Let's click new arrivals. So Josh McNamara has been rated by the board as our star man. I'm not sure I personally would agree with that. I, I would probably go with Freddie Cook, actually. I think he's been sensational. I mean, in terms of who I say a hits and miss, hit, 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 hit. Meh. Pro probably just about a hit, but nothing. Not He's not rooted up trees or anything like that. These are the players that have that they've got us leaving. So Harry Emmett, Ryan Blackman, Kasper Kowalsic, George Fowler, Tom Bilson. Some familiar names in there for you, I'm sure. Looking at the season's results, attempt to avoid relegation from Skybet League 2, finishing sixth. We absolutely smashed it again. 35% home attendance field. Josh Woods was a top goal scorer. I mean, I think that's harsh. A C plus. They wanted us to attempt to avoid relegation. We finished sixth and we get a C plus. The, something about this doesn't really feel right for me. In the FA Cup, we got to the third round, lost to Everton, got a B minus, fine. Carabao Cup, we lost to Oxford United in the first round, we got a C for that. So that, that yeah, the Bristol thing, C, that's what that is, I'm not worried about that. 
Their biggest win was 4-0 against the eventual league champions, Leighton Orient. The match, remember, was a 4-1 win against Tranmere, and that also produced the goal of the season from Abdul Abdul Malik. So good they named him twice. In terms of who we're keeping and selling, luckily all the... Well, Timmy Abraham we were, were undecided about, but he sells shirts. We've sold 259 shirts. Non-domestic sales were £1,630. So we've got 16.3k in merchandise sales. Sponsorship is up. Broadcast revenue is up. Corporate hospitality is up. Competition prize money is down. And match day commercial and retail is down. No change to our reputation, which again, I think is a bit harsh actually. No new sponsorship deals. This is what they've got as their average or their best 11. McNamara, Vaz, Burns, Cook, Sanchez, Lawson, Kalishkin, Kawa, Abdul Malik, Asario, Wood. No, Henry goes in there, put Kawa over there. That's, probably, that's the only disagreement I have with that. In terms of the accolades, David Kawa, plan, plans, fans player of the season was 7.1. Young player of the season, I mean, he's 24 years old. I don't know how much longer he can carry on being classed as young for, but he's got that as well. Josh McNamara signed of the season. Abdul Abdul Malik with a goal of the season. Josh Woods with 22 goals, their top goal scorer. David Cowell with the most assists. David Cowell with the most player of the match awards. David Cowell with the highest average rate. I mean, it is the David Cowell show. That's what I'm working out here. Sebastian Cortez with the most pass, passes completed per 90 minutes. And in terms of record breakers, Mehmet Kalishkin, youngest goal scorer, 18 years and 198 days. I got a Manager of the Month award for October. I mean, that just about shows you that we were never really dominant at any point in this season by the fact that I only got a one Manager of the Month award. I think that's quite shocking in itself. History in the making, an ultimately successful season for Averley started superbly and set them up perfectly for what was to follow. Averley, thanks for a great, run away, a great run way back at the start of the season. I mean, we were terrible at the start of the season. Proved much better than people had expected. He is a writer, I presume, for the Football Radar. I wouldn't bother reading the Football Radar. I don't think they're very, very good if that's his opinion. Manager timeline, I don't bother that, you know me. Now, we are going to be going on end of season breaks and all this sort of stuff. Players inducted into the first 11. Abdul Abdul Malik is in there. We've still got Matty Rush up top, Muit, Benton, Odd Lucy, Guillaume. I don't think I want Benton to ever come out of this. Luciano, Berry, Francis Clark, Vaz and Ischiello. Same with Vaz, I don't want him ever coming out of this either. So that's the season review. We don't need to see it, we've already seen it again. Supporter profile for any of you that are interested. The supporters have a high influence on the board. We've got social media followers of 13.1k, it's gone up by 1.6k. 861 season ticket holders, no waiting list. Our biggest group on here is the core, which is 33%, followed by the family, which is 22%, casual 17%, hardcore 13%, fair weather 13%, and corporate. At least we've got 2% corporate in there. That's, that's good to see. We will accept all this. It's what we know anyway. Squad dynamics, yep, they're good. End of season team meeting. I'll do that now. So... I don't actually know what they want us to do for next season. I presume it's going to be to avoid relegation, because that, that's what... Thank you for coming in. Blah, blah, blah. I'd like to talk about a Skybet League 2. I'm optimistic we can avoid a fight against relegation and stay up. Yeah, they're satisfied with that. This goes back to what I said before about one of the reasons why I left David is because the mentality of the club is just all... You know, like I said, we've just finished it. We've lost in the playoff final. Why are you still worrying about avoiding relegation? At least, at least say mid-table finish. That's exactly the sort of reaction I don't want to talk about anything else. They're happy with that. Don't want to push my luck. Everyone's delighted. We can then move on to the next part. I want to see if Galinsky is going to be going on his coaching course. There you go. He's studying for his coaching course. Four months it's going to take. What I'm also looking at is if we look at my profile, we've got our B licence. Can we go for our C license, uh, our A license, sorry. So make board requests, personal, no, I don't want a new contract. Are we studying for one? G 
due to the club being in a takeover. Oh god! So that so we can't increase. Hmm. I'm wondering if I'm already studying. I can't remember. I mean, it's possible that I'm already studying, but it should say here if you're studying for a different license. But okay, I'll give it a bit of time to see what it says. I'll keep trying in the meantime as well. But we're getting a little profile building up here. You know, we're, we're doing all right for ourselves. So what I'll do now is that let's just have a look at a few of the other things to do with English football, see how it's gone on in the last few years. So Manchester City are title holders for the Premier Division. It sounds like that doesn't change much. Let's have a look at... So Luton and... Oh, Ipswich have been in the league. Anyone in here we wouldn't expect to see, or maybe Southampton, but you probably would expect to see Southampton, wouldn't you? So if we go back to the beginning, so this was first season, Man City and Arsenal, Liverpool, Man United getting in the Champions League, or Tottenham getting in the Champions League as well because they're the fifth place. Luton, Sheffield United and Burnley have gone down. Pretty accurate to real life, I, I would imagine. Then in the following season, Everton, not the fight, so Southampton would have come up and they've gone back down again. Leeds came up and Leicester came up. They've survived. Much of a muchness in terms of all of that. Watford would have come up. Ipswich, they've gone back down. Middlesbrough, they've gone back down. So it's like another Burnley, Luton, Sheffield United thing. But Leicester still stayed up and so have Leeds. And then we get into the previous season... Leicester are still there. Leeds have gone down. Everton are there. I mean, Forest are staying in the league as well. Aston Villa don't seem to be kicking on. Wolves finishing fifth. Wow, they've had a great season, Wolves. So in terms of past winners, it's been Man City, Man City, Man City, Liverpool, Man City. So some things don't change, I guess. Arsenal have had a couple of second places and the rest third places. Chelsea, Liverpool, Man United, Liverpool being third as well. That's a bit anticlimactic. What I do want to show you, actually, I was going to do a separate video on this because the World Cup in 2026 is, we need to get there first, is absolute madness. Where's the pictures and results? No. How did I get to it last time? Oh, come on, I just want to see the 2026 World Cup. Schedule. Past winners. There we go, 2026. So, this is an expanded World Cup. I've got, what, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Twelve groups start it off, right? And when you've got Uzbekistan has qualified for the World Cup, Venezuela has qualified for the World Cup, there's so many weird teams in here that you never see at the World Cup that have qualified. But if you look at it, the top two in every group go through. But then you get the third place team, and I think it's five of the groups. Yeah, five of the groups also go through as well. It's probably the uh, best place, third placed teams or something like that. But what it's meant is you've got someone like the USA that's played three games. They've beaten Uzbekistan. They've lost the other two games, yet they've qualified for the knockout stage of the World Cup. So you've got Turkey and Chile with the USA. Then you've got Canada and Ireland. They miss out. Which, yeah, it's only two points to Senegal, I suppose. Then you've got Mexico and Croatia have qualified, along with Algeria. Then you've got Netherlands and Serbia have qualified, along with Australia, who, again, another team of only three points. Then you've got Nigeria and Sweden have qualified, with Spain qualifying in third. Now, fair play, they probably deserve to because they all finished on five points. You can kind of understand that one. Then you've got France and Egypt have qualified, but Suriname with two points the same... Oh, no, it's three points is the other one, isn't it? Yeah. So that was Suriname. Where did we get to? There we go. So we got to that one there. So then, Group G, you've got Brazil and Romania are qualified. Tunisia go through as well. Ecuador and Portugal then go through. Jamaica have gone through. I mean, how bad are Japan if they've not 
won a single game. I've only scored one goal in them three games as well. Then you've got Scotland and Morocco go through. Argentina through third in the group. I mean, if Argentina can't qualify from a group by finishing the top two that contains Scotland, Morocco and Saudi Arabia, quite frankly, they don't deserve to go through. Uruguay and Belgium qualify. Mali and Costa Rica don't. England and South Korea qualify. England didn't even concede a goal in that. And then Italy and Denmark go through. So they're, they're the group stages. Then you get into the second round. So you then go into a round of 32 for the knockout stages. I'll let you look at that as you wish to see what teams scored, but in terms or what matches there were. But in terms of England, they beat Spain 2 1 in the round of 32. So Spain have had a terrible World Cup anyway, they've gone out of it. You then get into the round of 16. England have beaten Scotland 2-1. Portugal have beaten Uruguay. Ecuador have beaten South Korea. Italy have beaten Brazil. So Brazil out very early. Nigeria have put Argentina out of the World Cup. I mean, it's just madness. Netherlands put out Ireland. Sweden put out Canada. France put out the host Turkey. So Nigeria, who did Nigeria play in the second round, the round of 32? They put out Cameroon. So all African affair in that one. Then you get to the quarterfinals. France have ended Nigeria's run. Netherlands have put Sweden out 2-1 after extra time. Italy have put England out. And Portugal have put an Ecuador out. So by this point, it's sort of kind of coming into some sort of logical conclusion now. And then France beat Portugal. Netherlands beat Italy. I mean, fair play Netherlands. They never win anything. Then in the final, France 4-3 against... The Netherlands, that is a great result. Third place playoff, Italy beat Portugal. So, if we look at the European Football Championship, so England are the holders of this. So that's the one that we've had in real life. This is the one that's coming up this summer, basically. So they must have another, yeah, there's another Euros due this year. So in next week's video, I'll show you what happened in the 2028 Euros. But again, you've, this doesn't seem as mad, to be honest. There's not as many groups. So Belgium and Scotland have gone through Czechia and Germany, Albania and Denmark, Italy, didn't even, not even, Netherlands, not even making it through. So Netherlands never made it through to the 2024 20, Euros. Didn't, oh no, in, this is a group stage. Okay. I thought this was qualifying for a minute. So, oh, we're in the 2020. Oh, so this is a draw for the 20. So Netherlands then, you've got to say, must be one of the favourites for the Euros if they've won the World Cup. But if we go back in history, have a look at past winners, click on the 2024 one, go to all groups. So Spain and Germany qualify from their group, Iceland and Wales going out. Turkey and Croatia. So yeah, Netherlands actually in this one, they did finish third in their group. So they never qualified out of their group stage in the Euros. And then two years later, they went on and won the World Cup. It is a 2024 group, so it is, that is right. Oh, no, they've, quali oh, they've qualified as third-placed. So out of these groups, there's also three third-placed teams that go through as well. This is confusing me. It don't take much to confuse me, folks. I, I, I appreciate that. So Norway have gone out. Then you've got Denmark, Poland and Hungary have gone through. Belgium, Ireland and Switzerland have gone through. Italy, England and Scotland have gone through. France and Portugal have gone through. Spain have been randomly chosen over Germany after both teams finished on seven points with the same record. <laughs> They've just been randomly chosen. I mean, they both qualify, so it doesn't really matter, but how do you just randomly choose someone? Do you not even do heads or tails? Okay, so then we get into the second round. Spain have beaten Poland, Germany have beaten Croatia, Turkey have beaten Switzerland, Scotland have beaten Denmark, England after extra time beat Ireland, France beat Hungary, Italy beat Netherlands, so Netherlands have gone out in the last 16 of it, Portugal then beat Belgium, then you get into the quarterfinals, England on penalties knocked out France, Turkey knocked out Spain, Germany have knocked out Scotland and then Portugal knock out Italy, then into the semi-finals, England beat Turkey, Portugal beat Germany, and then in the final, obviously, England beat Portugal. So 
there you go. If you want to go by Football Manager, get a friendly bet on with you guys. Go to the bookmakers. That's the kind of thing you're into. Bet responsibly. And yeah, that's how the World Cup and the Euros have gone. Let me know in the comments what you think of the 2026 World Cup and how how much the World Cup has changed in terms of how easy it is now for teams to get into the World Cup and to even progress from the group stage. I mean, the fact that teams are qualifying with just one win from three games, I think is madness. But I suppose it is all about the money. Anyway, thank you very much for joining us for the video, folks. I hope you've enjoyed it. Next week, the video will be more of a structured affair, I believe. But if there's anything you want to see that I've not covered, let me know in the comments. I can try and make sure I add that into future episodes of this. It's kind of an ongoing thing. So, or it is an ongoing thing, but it's a work in progress is what I meant. So yeah, every Sunday from now on until either we get to the top with Avely or I get sacked, whichever one comes first, these videos will be coming out every Sunday at 2pm. Drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications. Thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.